2021 has definitely been a year of the gravel and adventure bike. With a sheer number of new bikes launched, a clear sign of how popular they are. And it definitely kept me busy this year. So in this video, I'll take a bit of time to look back at some of the biggest, the most interesting and the hottest gravel bikes launched in 2021 and what we can expect in 2022. And if you want to see the best road bikes launched in 2021, then make sure you click on this video up here right after you watch this video. But first, this video is sponsored by Pedalshore, the insurance company that makes it quick, easy and affordable to get your gravel and adventure bike insured instantly. Go to their website, link down below, get a really easy quote, take seconds and there's even a chance to get a free hip lock right now as well. So what are you waiting for? Get your bike insured right away. Okay, on with my roundup of the best gravel bikes launched in 2021. This video is in no particular order, so I let you rank them by your favorites by leaving a comment down below. But we'll start with a brand new Scott Addict Gravel, which on paper looks exceptionally good and falls into that speed focus, aero, race optimized gravel bike category with the likes of the Cervelo Espero and the 3T Explorer Race Max. Now this new bike is super rare, so rare in fact, it's not actually available right now and probably won't be available until 2022, but lots to look forward to, at least by judging the bike on paper. So the new bike still borrows the name of the road bike it's based on, which I reviewed last year, a really good lightweight, aero, stiff, performance focused bike. The name sharing is an interesting move, but you really see a similarity between the two bikes, lots of shared technology. That real speed focus is the overriding kind of DNA of this bike. The bike launched back in 2017 originally, but this new version has quite a few good updates to make sure it can compete with the latest and greatest gravel and adventure bikes. It looks fast and ready to race and now has bigger tire clearance, which is a good thing, but also mountain bike inspired geometry, another good thing, and full internal cable routing, which is maybe not such a good thing, depending on your point of view of internal versus external cable routing. It's inevitable that gravel bikes will embrace more road bike tech going forward, and this one definitely closer to the road bike they're based on and shares the same name with. You get a Swish one-piece carbon handlebar and stem, which looks really cool, with full internal cable routing at the front, and really area optimized tube profiles from a down tube, the seat tube, and the seat post. And despite the obvious speed focus, there's a good smattering of mounts for extra bags, racks and bottles. So a good bike packing option, but definitely a fast uh, micro bike packing option rather than a super rugged uh, Himalayan Atlas Mountains kind of epic conquesting bike. Definitely a speed focused bike, dirty cans, uh, a couple of day bike packing with a credit card sort of riding. So looks a really good bike on paper. Like I said earlier, not actually available yet. Hopefully in 2022, we'll get a chance to ride one and see if it's as good as it does look on paper. When is a gravel bike not a gravel bike? Well, when it's a cyclocross bike. Back in the early days of gravel racing in the US where the scene really originated, there weren't gravel bikes and instead they used cross bikes. Cross bikes normally reserved for one hour racing around a playing field, now being adopted for gravel racing long distance gravel riding and specialized with a brand new crux has kept that cross DNA in that race focus, but given it a few changes to make it a versatile gravel bike option as well. Not versatile as in a bike packing option, but versatile as in it can do cross on a Sunday and then gravel adventuring on the Monday. To make the crux more of a gravel friendly option, but now massive tire clearance, so you can fit up to a 47 minutes of wide tire, which is the same as the company Diverge their dedicated gravel and adventure bike offering. We also have improved geometry. So the bottom bracket is a bit lower than their old crux, not as low as the Diverge, and also a bit longer in the reach with a shorter stem. Give that more planted, more stable handling when you are doing gravel adventuring, but should still retain the speed and agility and nimbleness you want in a slightly cross setup. And then to the frame itself, which as you can see, looks like the Athos road bike they launched a year ago on steroids. And they basically borrowed all that technology and understanding from developing the Athos road bike and apply it to the Crux. So very similar visuals, nice round tube profiles, external cable routing, external bottom bracket, and an external seat clamp as well. All good things in my book. And a result of a new frame 
It's a claim weight of 725 grams for a 56 centimeter and a complete build in the S work trim of 7.25 kilograms. That's lighter than many road bikes, but you can fit whopping wide tires on it. So lots of good features. The one thing that holds it back from being a pure dedicated gravel bike, there's no mudguard mounts, there's no extra water bottle or accessory mounts, none on the top tube. So it retains that uh, clean focus of a cross bike in that regard. But a bigger tire clearance and the geometry should make it a better all round bike for a bit of cross and a bit of gravel. Now, making the Crux a gravel bike or a gravel light bike is a controversial move. Taking it away from that cross focus does risk alienating those people who do race cross every weekend. But I'd argue that the number of people actually buying a top level cross bike or buying two with a pit crew, if they're taking it that seriously, is pretty small compared to the massive size of the gravel sector. And increasingly, you're seeing people who buy a, well, used to buy a cross bike in the past and dabble in cross racing, and then turn that bike into a road winter setup, and now buying a gravel bike for road winter commuting and gravel adventure exploring and bike packing as well, and then dabbling in the cross scene through the winter. So better to buy a gravel bike and adopt it for occasional cross racing than the other way around. The best new bike name launch this year is surely the brand new Canyon Grizzle. This is a German company's second gravel bike and follows in the footsteps of the Grail, but drops the distinctive hover handlebar for a more conventional handlebar and stem setup. It then proceeds to tick a lot of modern gravel bike requirements. So clearance for up to a 50 mil wide tire with 45 fitted as standard, eyelets for extra bottles, bags and mud guards, and Canyon will even sell you some bespoke Apertura bags if you want a complete out of the box bike packing setup. Geometry is similar to the Grail with a long reach and short stem setup that I found worked really well for off-road riding and bike packing adventures. Any fear the Grail will be dropped as a result were proved unfounded just this week as 2022 Grails were launched. So all that and then Canyon's famous value for money despite prices going up during the pandemic makes it a really appealing option in the gravel adventure bike market right now. And it's a bike I rode and reviewed earlier this year. Took it to Scotland for a bike packing adventure and it's a bike that really does work well off-road. And while it's probably not as fast as a Grail, for exploring your local woodland trails, bike packing, adventure riding, I'd argue it's a better option. It's smoother, good comfort, the handling is nice and easy and relaxed, just an easier bike to live with, especially with a regular handlebar and stem. And the aluminium version of the Grizzle gives you even better value for money. And it's even a version with a fantastic RockShot Rudy suspension fork, which I reviewed earlier this year as well. That fork on its own is a lot of money, but can you give you that fork on an aluminium gravel bike for a very, very appealing price tag? Giant launched a better, lighter and faster version of its Revolt Advanced gravel bike in 2021 building on a solid foundation of the previous version, and you might see my review on that bike linked above in case you missed it. So Revolt is a solid option in the gravel bike sector at the moment. Great value for money, great frame design and engineering. Perhaps not the most exciting option, but I think Giant are definitely changing that with really good paint jobs and nice understated graphics. With bigger tire clearance, a lighter frame, an adjustable geometry, and even more accessory mounts than before, the bike retains the comfort and value for money of your old bike, but makes it even more useful, even faster, and even more versatile. It's an easy pick in a crowded gravel bike market. I really like the longer reach and the short stem setup of the bike. It works extremely well off-road, whilst retaining good fit and comfort on the road. There's loads of water bottle mounts. You fit up to six water bottles if you need, and there are mudguard mounts as well, so a great winter road bike option. And the value for money from Giant is still really, really good. The top end model is £5,000 with carbon frame, GRX, DI2 and carbon wheels where some brands are charging you 10, 11 or £12,000 for their top end models. So a lot of bike for not a lot of cash. I think one of the most interesting on paper new bikes launched this year is the all new BMC Unrestricted LT, a dual suspension gravel bike. Now you might see my review on the regular Urs for short, unrestricted bike with rear suspension. It's not really rear suspension. They have flexible rear stays and a elastomer 
by the seat tube giving up to 10 millimeters of rear wheel movement, just enough to take the edge off uh, jarring impacts like roots and rocks. And while it worked very well in my experience, the front end definitely felt very stiff compared to that softer back end. And especially compared to a bike like a Specialized Diverge with the excellent Future Shock. It definitely needs something at the front. Well, now it does have something at the front, a 20 millimeter suspension setup in a similar way to the old Cannondale Headshock, but hopefully implemented much better. So the front suspension delivers a claimed 20 millimeters of travel and was developed by the same Italian company, High Ride, that worked with Pinarello a couple of years ago on a cobble crushing dogma. The system uses a coil spring with three springs to choose from, depending on your rider weight, preload adjustment, and a lockout for road riding. Maintenance is an obvious concern, of course, but BMC is confident there should be very little to worry about. Time will tell on that front. So a dual suspension gravel bike, sort of. But is suspension on a gravel bike too much? Well, some will say yes, and some will say no. That's probably a topic for another video in the future. But my experience this year with some gravel suspension products, like the RockShot Rudy and the uh, suspension stem from Redshift, does make me lean towards a bit of suspension being a good thing on a gravel bike without taking away the essence of a gravel bike, simplicity and low maintenance. That RockShot Rudy is probably the best example of a suspension product on a gravel bike I've yet tested. It added a bit of weight, yes, but gave much smoother comfort on rough gravel and much more control and fun on tricky descents with no obvious downsides, apart from the price, it's quite expensive. I do like the way BMC have integrated a suspension into the bike, so from a distance, it doesn't look any different to a normal gravel bike, but loads of adjustment and hopefully loads of extra comfort and control over a conventional gravel bike. Hopefully, I'll get a chance to ride one in 2022 and see if it's as good as it looks on paper. What the new gravel bikes launched in 2021 do is show us the breadth of choice available in this rapidly maturing and evolving category. From speed focused aero gravel at one end to ultra capable, ultra versatile bike packing options at the other end and everything in between. Cross bikes like the Crocs being given a gravel makeover and the brand new Villier Rave is a really interesting direction from the Italian bike brand, a gravel bike that can also be a road bike. Villier even offers it in two builds, one tailored for road and the other a typical gravel setup. There's a 42 tire max limit, which is a bit stingy by modern gravel bike standards, but for the Nintendo rider, it's likely enough. And that's a rider that wants to go gravel racing, where the gravel is smooth, rather than grinding up and over mountains and technical trails and carrying a kitchen sink with them. It's not a cheap gravel bike though, and prices are pretty eye-watering for the bikes they are putting out. But I like, or I'm intrigued by this dual personality of the Rave, a road bike and a gravel bike, one and the same theme, is it a bike that's going to be a jack of all trades? Will it be good on the road? Will it be good off-road? Will it be rubbish at both? Well, time will tell. Hopefully I'll get a chance to ride one in 2022. Right, those are some of the most interesting new gravel bikes launched in 2021, in my opinion at least. I can't wait to see what 2022 brings and what direction the whole gravel and adventure bike category goes in or how much it continues to diversify in different directions. Let me know which of these bikes floats your boat by leaving a comment down below and which bikes I missed out as well. Love to hear from you as always. Don't forget to check out Pedal Short if you need insurance for your new gravel bike by checking the link down below. But that's all for now. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all again very soon.